<laughs> hey there. I'm still disoriented. <laughs> what day is it? It's Saturday morning. <laughs> I don't even know what the date is. I was lucky to know it was Saturday morning. I certainly don't know what date it is. But my name is Ken Tracy. <laughs> and that's my dog, Holly. And this is Coffee with Ken. <laughs> Thank you all for joining. Hello, Max Thompson. Hello, hallow be thy name. Hello, Milagro. Hello, Leo. I'm a Leo. Hello, Peyton. Hello, one sty. Hello, Jack Taylor. Jack Taylor, I'm not feeling well. I've been really, I'm mentally crushed for the record. I'm mentally completely unhealthy and need help. Uh, but that aside, uh, I think God delivered help in a strange way by uh, getting me sick, <laughs> like physically sick. Like I got a really bad cold and have for four or five, four, four days. This is going to be day three of really not leaving the house. And I think God knew I needed a mental health and a physical health break and knew the only way I would take it is by being very sick and not being able to leave the house. Thank you. Well, let me see who just said bald men are hot. Is that a Kentucky boy? Well, I don't know. Again, I've talked about it before. Hello. Natalie Mason, good morning, Scott Concrete. <laughs> Scott Concrete, you've made it into a couple of my videos. I uh, always do these, real quickly, my name's Ken Tracy, and this is Coffee with Ken. Uh, this is a show I started a few months ago, not a few months ago, see, I'm delirious, about three and a half years ago. And uh, it's a show about me talking and sharing some experiences and some ups and downs that I go through in life. Uh, for those that have been watching a while, and I appreciate, I see some names that are popping up. Hello, Julie Flanagan. Over and over. You guys know. Uh, uh, happy Saturday. Is it Gambier or Gambler? I can't read. I don't have my eyes in. But anyway, for those who have been watching a while, you know it's also a show. Well, go get some coffee. How about sharing my love of coffee? <laughs> And I, it's eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Usually I would have had, I don't know, half a pot of coffee by now. And uh, I've been sick over the last three or four days, trying to get extra sleep, extra rest, and barely moved. And I woke up after seven this morning, which felt nice and was desperately needed. And I'm still sick. And when you're sick, you're not that excited about having coffee. Central time zone, yes. Uh, but since this is a show called Coffee with Ken, and since I wouldn't know what to do, how to talk on my show without having a some base, some something to surround my content with, which is coffee. <laughs> I'm gonna pour myself a hot, a, cup of, a hot cup of coffee. Look at this, the pot's full. That has never happened in my life. Uh, yeah, Jack Taylor, I got a bottle of Tylenol over there. Uh, having a pot of coffee at eight o'clock, a full pot has never happened in the live history of my show. So I'm gonna pour myself a cup of coffee, which I just did. And I, hey Shannon, uh, I am going to come back, by the way Jack Taylor, my sweet little neighbor brought me over some Tylenol, some Vicks Vapor Rub, some Kleenex, some chicken noodle soup, and uh, I don't know. Mothered me when my own mother couldn't. Uh, so I'm going to come on over. 
have a seat on the couch. I'm gonna give you a quick tour. I got, while I'm standing, it's easier to give you a quick tour. Again, I'm coming at you from Naperville, Illinois. It's a town of about 150,000 people, 35 miles west of Chicago. Not gonna to tour my whole house. Gonna show you what it's like outside today, uh, this Saturday morning. Excuse me. It's a little snowy out there, which is pretty. I feel bad. I can't. Uh, I can't uh, go enjoy it with my dog Holly. How's Holly? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how Holly. She's good. She's always good. She's she's good. And I, I look. I'm not my best. I'm not my best. Uh, and I mean, I think God put Holly here for a reason in my life to give me love when I needed it. Well, let me tell you, she doesn't think there's a moment in the day. I kid you not. I kid you not that she shouldn't be being pet. The only time she believes she should not be being pet is when we're on a walk. It's crazy. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding, you know? Like, look, she's clawing me right now. She's clawing and headbutting me all the time, all day long, all the time. Look, I mean, I love her. I'm lucky to have her, but I'm feeling well. And it's like, I, Holly, please let me lay, lay here. <laughs> she's ramming her head into my crotch, going, pet me. Pet me! If I stop, she'll attack. Look, she attacks. I mean, all day. <laughs> Again, I think God gave me Holly for a reason. Because she knew, or God, she almost made God a she. I don't know. Maybe that's hip these days, or I don't know what it means. But uh, because uh, I needed the love and the attention that Holly that only a special dog like Holly can give. <laughs> a beautiful English Springer Spaniel with an abundance of enthusiasm for everything, as most dogs have. Uh, uh, I don't know if I have COVID. I didn't get tested. I've had COVID before. I've had COVID before. And it was not... I get... I, I will say I never get sick, and I almost never get sick. But every three or four years, I get pretty sick. It could be strep throat, which is very painful. Look at this. I got a full hot cup of coffee, and I haven't even had a sip, and it's 8 o'clock. Uh, I don't know what I have. It feels like, I don't know, what I'd always call the really bad cold. <laughs> Maybe it's more than a cold. I I don't know. I never. I don't even know what the flu is. Maybe I have the flu. Maybe I have COVID. I don't know. If I'm good today, I'll get one potato chip, but if I stay locked in the cellar, I don't know. That's not even funny. Unless I just don't get it. Hello, Tanya from North Carolina. Hey, thank you so much for following the host. Hey, I'm morning from central Uganda. He was pretty mild, just congested and tired and a headache. You know, I've almost never... We're brief. What's your real name? I know... You... How's your son Lawrence doing? What is he, three and a half months old these days? Yeah, Dave, I get it. I get it. And I, I think you're right about that. And again, I think our body tells us things. And I think in a normal day, I would have had a ton of coffee by now. Uh, I would have had a ton of coffee by now. Uh, but again, I'm going to have a little bit just for fun. <laughs> just because the show is called Coffee with Ken. So let me have my first sip. I hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you got a hot cup of coffee in front of you. Uh, cheers. Cheers to us. Mm. Uh, it's the pumpkin spice, the cheap version. The Target brand. It's got such a... Probably an artificial flavor. Good morning, two girl ma. I hope you're doing well. Good morning, Millie Forever Living. Brianna, 
if I ever, because I knew your kid's name. You call him Lawrence, or you said he was Lawrence. It's Larry. It's either way. It's whatever we go with, I guess. Uh, thank you so much for sending roses. I still don't even know what it means, but I think it's sweet to get little likes or nice things sent my way. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Captain Kenny. Good morning, Danny. Good morning, L. Good morning, Terry. I love that people are still joining. Uh, again, my name's Ken Tracy. <laughs> and I'm sick today. I do this show. I try and do this show every morning. Good morning, Art. Uh, at 8 o'clock live. This week has been spotty. As I mentioned at the top of my show, I been struggling with mental health issues this week, or not this week, for about, I mean, probably most of my life, but I mean, it's come to a head uh, this week, and on Wednesday, I had a therapist appointment that I tried to make two months prior-ish, and met with the therapist, and I thought it was okay, (sighs) But I met with her at 8 o'clock, which did not allow me to go live on Wednesday. And on Thursday, I was deathly sick. Friday, I was still sick. Yet I cranked out a show just for so you guys wouldn't worry about me. And uh, uh, how is house, house selling going this week? Hello, Laura. Oh, yes. House selling's going magically this week. It's the week before Christmas, and I'm sick as a dog. I've sold 12 homes this week. Abe. <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on. How's house selling, selling going this week? <laughs> I'm seeing a therapist. On, I saw a therapist on Wednesday. I'm totally sick. And it's the week before Christmas, and Abe wants to know how house selling is going this week. I mean, come on. I sold 15 homes this week. It's the best week I've ever had. Hashtag blessed. (laughs) I love my job. (laughs) Anyway, that's why I want to get out of real estate. Abe, come on. I mean, are are you really just asking? Are you really just asking? How do you think house selling is going this week? I mean, how how many, what do you want me to say? Oh, it's awesome. It's amazing. (laughs) I mean, seriously. Seriously. (laughs) It's a week before Christmas and I'm completely sick and I'm talking about seeing a therapist on Wednesday for my mental health. And Abe wants to know how house selling is going this week. It's not going that well, Abe. I didn't sell any houses this week. I don't know. Maybe I suck. (laughs) Maybe I suck. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't have said that, Mary, because it's not true. And you're about to be removed from the conversation, Mary. Because maybe you say things without thinking too often to me. And maybe you think that's okay. And it's not okay. So please stop. All right. Oh. Let me see that. Yeah, here we go. All right. And I was reached out by a troll. Well, seriously, Mary. Seriously, Mary. Maybe you shouldn't have said that. Maybe you shouldn't have said that, Mary. You don't think I might find that offensive? That my wife's first husband moved in with her, making him a good guy? You don't think that's offensive to me, Mary? You don't think I could be bothered that My wife's first husband is now living with her. You don't think that might bother me, Mary? And you calling him a good guy for moving in with my wife might be offensive to me? You didn't think that might be offensive? You know, come on. 
mean, come on. I mean, maybe I shouldn't do this anymore because I think it gives people the... I'm trying to help people and I'm trying to be real. But people say the stupidest things. And Mary, you do. And I'm not pleased. I'm not pleased. And I get stalked and I get harassed. And I got fired and I got lied about and I'm getting dragged through the mud. And for Mary, you think it okay to say it's my, ex, my wife's ex-husband's a great guy for moving in with her. You don't think that might hurt my feelings? <laughs> I mean, seriously, seriously. Are you sure you didn't mean to offend? <laughs> Come on. My ex-husband, my ex-husband, my wife's ex-husband lives with her. You don't think that might bother me? Maybe I shouldn't have left. I bet you're a troll account. Let me see. Let me see. You are. When you say I left, do you want me to go into that? Do you want me to go into that? I left? I left? I left? Maybe we should evaluate what leaving means. Fake account. All right, Jack. But okay, let's look. Maybe I shouldn't have left. <laughs> a fake account. It's probably my wife who stalks me, honestly. Who stalks me? Who stalks me? <laughs> uh, all right, Rebecca. All right, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. It's hard to ignore the people, though. It's hard to ignore people. I read the comments. I mean, I don't know. I'm a sensitive human being. I read hate being spewed at me. It's hard to ignore it. And it makes me wonder if this is worthwhile. I try and I, I feel it out. I think it's therapy for me, but maybe it's net negative. And maybe I shouldn't do it. And maybe I should go into hiding and whatever. You know? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Abe, you're not probably a troll. You're not probably a troll. You're not probably a troll. Uh, uh, yeah, Abe, you're not a troll. No, I'm, look, no, I'm not working for UPS today. I'm sick as hell. <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm not working for UPS today. I'm sick as hell. You know, hi, King Marky. Yes, I have four children. I have four beautiful children. Maybe I shouldn't do this today. You know? No, but Game Beer was there right away. I mean, come on. Or maybe I do it wrong because I can't keep answering. Maybe I should stop comments? I mean, the whole point of live is to engage with the audience. The whole point of the live is to engage with the audience. But I just feel engaging and exposing yourself. Mm. <laughs> Debbie Gibson wasn't the best singer ever. I mean, I, I, was, I went to college in the 80s when Debbie Gibson and who was the chick from the mall? Who was the chick, the redhead girl from the mall? <laughs> uh, Laura... Laura, the coffee's still hard. Holly, no, 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 no. She wants to go for a walk. Tiffany, thank you, Titan. Tiffany, Tiffany, God, you all know. You must be old, too. You must be old, too. Maybe they're right. I'm going to take Holly out back. Oh. Because 
she thinks we should be going for a walk. Because again, if I'm not actively petting her, she thinks we should be going for a walk. Go out there, Holly. Go poop while you're out there. It's a fenced in backyard. You can go poop in the yard without me walking you. They say you can't. <laughs> she toured with new kids? Uh, no, Jack. Naperville only got a little snow. I hear I look like Bruce Willis. Thank you. I think Bruce Willis is cool. I feel sorry for him because I know he's going through some stuff, health stuff. And I've seen health stuff, that sort of health stuff uh, on my mom. And uh, it's unfortunate because uh, Bruce Willis just is, I don't know. I don't know. It was always kind of cool. Kind of funny. Kind of a regular guy, superhero, rolled into one. Uh, yeah, Tiffany. I should listen. I should get on Pandora and create a... Uh, Laura, did you? Hello. Ethan from Knoxville, Tennessee. Did you? Yeah. Hello, Faith. Thank you for joining. I'm getting my energy back and my spirit back for a while. For a while, you know, I was losing it. Because people say things. And they don't seem to care. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's sadly, I uh, appreciate you saying that. It makes me uh, almost cry. Because, uh, yeah. Uh, and I'm glad that his kids were around him and his ex. And I don't really know what's going on. But I hear, Bru I, hear I look like Bruce Willis every day. Uh, thank you, G GTA. Uh, <laughs> hey, is Abe still there, the realtor? I think it was Abe. Who's going to win the World Cup? I'm hoping for Argentina. I really am. I might even watch it. I don't know if I've ever... I'm not a big soccer fan, even slightly. I'm hardly a sports fan. But I do kind of like, I, I, I'm not mad at you, Abe. I'm just having a hard week. Uh, yeah, well, it's good. It's good. I, he should have a good relationship with them. They have two beautiful, or uh, they have beautiful children together. And uh, I'm not even going to hang on, Abe. I think I'm going to walk away after 17 years. I don't think I enjoyed it. That's my thoughts about that. But I'd like to see that uh, Bruce Willis has a good relationship with Demi. Uh, I have a good relationship with my first wife. Uh, you know, it's not perfect. It's hard to have a perfect relationship with your ex-wife. Uh, I mean, I think that's why they're ex-wives. Uh, I mean, that's maybe not true. Maybe that's not true. Maybe you just weren't meant to be married. And... Thank you, Abe. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. Hello, Tanzania. Are you really from Tanzania? I appreciate when I get somebody from Africa ch chiming in. I like to go international. Because <laughs> this show, Coffee with Ken, is certainly worth... You'll have a good relay. Uh, maybe, Shannon. I'm struggling imagining that, but maybe... Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. So, how are you guys doing? Dave, I am like an UPS. Thank you for asking. I'm not working today. They're so cool. The They've been so cool to me. They've been so cool to me. Uh, you know, the pay's not... Uh, let me talk about UPS. Don't, let me talk about UPS. UPS has been so cool to me. Um, they hired me very quickly when I needed a job, when I needed a sense of purpose, when I needed a sense of meaning when I needed the money, when I needed the scheduling, the the hours. They hired me. You know, I heard about a potential job on Sunday. My buddy mentioned doing it. 
a few years back and said I should look into it. Monday I applied. Uh, Tuesday I dropped off social security card, things like that at the company base. Wednesday I did not work, but Thursday I was in a truck. Uh, I was in a truck delivering packages. And Friday I did, and you know, ever since the last five weeks or so, I've been working as a seasonal job for UPS. And it's taught me a lot about what I kind of want in life. I don't think I want to necessarily deliver packages, you know, for a living. Yeah, no, it was awesome, Leela. It was, uh, yeah, Shannon, I think they, I mean, honestly, they called me off. They said they didn't need me on Wednesday. I worked on Tuesday, although I was coming down with sickness. And Thursday, I called in and said, hey, I'm way sick. You know, in this world, I don't, I kind of believe in toughing it out if possible, but I was way too sick to be in a cold truck with a driver working, delivering packages in the cold. I mean, I would have died. I wouldn't have made it. Not to mention, if I'm the driver, I don't want to be in a small truck compartment with me. Uh, yeah, Leela, that's true. Um, but anyway, they were super cool about taking, letting me off a couple days because I needed it. Uh, they've been good getting me as many shifts and maybe they just need a worker. But I mean, the communication I have with the company has been fairly seamless, you know, uh, the pay I was paid, you know, with it the first week, sometimes when you, sometimes when you, you know, start a new job, you don't get a paycheck for I don't know, a while, but you know, I got a check. It wasn't big, you know, it wasn't big. It was only for two days, two short shifts. It was like you know, 85 bucks, but it was really only for like six hours of work and the previous week, but it, you know, it's, Hey, <laughs> And for a guy that's been a realtor all his life and has had to work as a realtor for six months before getting paid, uh, and it was a big check, granted, but still, you know, going occasionally a couple months without being paid, it was nice working, even though it was only six hours, and getting paid, even though it was only 84 bucks. You know, and it was nice, and then, you know, the checks have gotten bigger, and the hours have gotten longer, and the feeling of accomplishment and the feeling of well-being and the feeling of belonging um, has all grown and feeling of understanding my role and being good at what I'm doing has all made me feel good. Yeah, I, Laura, I've never gotten a consistent paycheck. I've never gotten a, I've, e I've either been a stockbroker or a realtor. There were a couple spots as a waiter and even as a waiter, you're not getting consistent paychecks, you know, you walk out with some cash. Sometimes you'd get a lot of cash. Yeah, Shannon, I'm good with math. Um, I'm good with math, but I'm not, I don't think I could be an accountant. I don't think I'm meant to be an accountant. I think you need to be very organized and very good with forms to be an accountant. <laughs> And I have thought about substitute teaching. Uh, I like a lot about it. I would struggle maybe in the educational environment. I think I've got too big of a mouth. I'm from a world that hugs people and, you know, I think there's, I think I'd get in trouble in a school setting. Yeah, markets, again, I'm not, they're small direct deposits, but suddenly there's money in my account, <laughs> you know? And I was able to send some money to a car payment and to my ex-wives, not much, not much, I promise you, not much, because there's not much money there. I need more, I need to send more to everything. But it was nice seeing it. Versus hoping I'd have a real estate closing. You know, and sometimes I'd have four and I'd feel like, woo, it's awesome. I got made 20 grand or 25 grand this month. But then some months there'd be zero. Good morning, Nora. I appreciate you. Thank you. They can't come in. You can't out. 
Uh, I don't know what you mean. I am probably not your dad mastery with Magnus. <laughs> I appreciate you guys for watching. And I can take some lighthearted uh, jokes. What do you mean they can't come after me? I mean, I don't know. I sent them money yesterday. What does come after me mean? I don't know. I pay them everything I can. I got fired from my job. I'm going to court to work out a divorce. Uh, you know, is there a chance? Maybe there's a chance. Yeah, Mark, it's great. It's great. It's great. I could never budget. I could never budget. I could never budget. And it's, you know, I couldn't budget. Some months I could make $20,000. I wouldn't have a care in the world about finances. Some months I'd make nothing. And I might make nothing for two months on a bad stretch. You don't make money for two months in a row, even if you made 20 months, three months prior. You know, <laughs> things get really tight really fast. And some months in real estate are slow. And I'm not trying to bash real estate. You know, you do you. Uh, which last video? I appreciate you enjoying my videos, you guys. I appreciate you for following my page. Yeah, okay. Well, Shannon, and I appreciate that as a thought. I just don't know that I'm a qualified to be an accountant. I can add and multiply and divide and square root. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Janice. Yeah, Abe. I was never able to put money aside. Yeah, I'm extremely sensitive. And I appreciate you guys for watching my videos and finding value in it, Janice. And I hope you follow my page. Uh, most of my videos are little nuggets clipped from these live videos that I've done. I think that works out pretty well. I think... I do a morning video every day where I say good morning and I have my first sip of coffee. I'm not feeling a whole lot better. I'm feeling pretty darn sick. Um, <laughs> and I'm sorry I lashed out at Abe and Mary earlier, but I'm very, yeah, I am. But I'm, <laughs> sometimes I feel I'm getting kicked. And when I'm getting kicked bad enough, I sometimes get mad. <laughs> What kind of symptoms? Uh, cough, achy as hell, congestion, but not runny nose. My neighbor bought me a box of Kleenex. I haven't opened it yet. Uh, okay, Abe. And Abe, I might follow you. I'm going to follow you. Removing you from my friend list. <laughs> That's kind of funny, Greek freak. I'm going to try and follow you, Abe, because you're interesting to me, because you said you're in real estate. And if you want to chat about real estate, oh, it's a private account. I just tried to follow you, Abe. Uh, I think bald lives matter. I think every lives matter. I think black lives matter. I do. I don't trust the organization. I'm not trying to offend anybody. Here, I'm going to follow you too, Matt. I'm not sure what you mean by that. But I'm going to follow you too, so you can directly reach out to me. I think Mary left. I think Mary probed deeper than I think she should probe and got involved and said things I think that she should know are somewhat offensive to me. I mean, I get she feels that way. You know? She'll be back, and if she's not, it maybe wasn't meant to be. I'll approve you. I'm not very tech to... Yeah, I used to be too, Abe. I I think you would find... Uh, I was on Facebook oh, since like 2007, and I thought it was the best thing ever. And I thought it was the coolest thing. And I kid you not, 
uh, when I first got on Facebook, it was like, hey, I can be like nice to more people. And for the longest time, I thought that's what Facebook was, me a chance to say good things about you and your child whose birthday it was today or to sing you happy birthday or to wish you sincere happy birthdays. But somehow during the previous election cycle and through COVID, I think Facebook became kind of a cesspool for hate and for meanness. And I got my, let myself fall into it. Uh, hey, from Ethiopia, another African. I love that. I mean, seriously, I'm truly international. I have people in Europe watching. It's weird. And that's what's cool about TikTok. Abe, I think if you put a little work into TikTok, you're going to find it so much cooler than any other social media platform. They're talking about banning it. Uh, oh, yeah, Abe. Oh, you're a woman. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I'm sorry if you're not a woman, Abe. Are you a woman? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I assumed your name was Abe. And then you said you have a husband, so I assumed you're a woman. Maybe you're a man and you have a husband, and maybe that's okay, and I don't care. But it's conf I'm just a guy that's confused and hasn't, his mind doesn't move as quickly as this whole gender thing has changed. I don't know. I don't know. Are you really from South Africa? Oh, okay. And it would be okay if you're a man and have a husband. I don't care what anyone does, really. I really don't. I really don't. But it's confusing is all I'm saying. And for the far left, and can I be political a little bit? I am a Pallone. I am a Pallone. I worked in restaurants as a waiter a few times, and there's a lot of... Mexican people, I'm just going to say it. For some reason, I feel I shouldn't say it. Like, it's bad to say there's Mexican people working in restaurants, but hello, there's Mexican people working in restaurants. And um, they would call me Pelon. I love those guys. It was so funny, and I call myself Pelon. Yeah, okay. For some reason, I'm going to say this, Abe, I think it's important. For some reason, I'm afraid to say, are you Mexican? Like it's a derogatory term. I think the left has us believing, asking if somebody's Mexican is derogatory. Like being Mexican's a bad thing. Why? Why Hispanic? No, I know. Why do I have to say Hispanic? You can ask if I'm Scottish. You don't have to say European. I mean, yes, you should be proud of being Mexican. I think the left has us thinking Mexican is derogatory. It's horrible. There's nothing wrong with me. I love Mexicans. I mean, I'm sure there's some bad ones, but there's nothing wrong with it. Does that make sense to you? Am I making sense? But I think the left has us thinking being Mexican is bad. I don't feel that people do get hurt. Love in Midwest isn't hurt. No, it's horrible. To be assumed? I mean, seriously. I live in a country <laughs> that is, I don't know, 25% Mexican-Americans. I think it's a fair assumption. Yeah, there's bad in every race. There is. White, black, Asian... Hispanic, <laughs> there's bad in everything. But until we can tear down all this crap that we can't even ask, 
you know, somebody's heritage. Yeah, there's also good in all people. And I'm sorry, this isn't the way my shows usually go, I don't think. Usually I'm full of energy and smiles and joy and love. But that's not where I'm at right now. You we should be proud. Good God. Every I'm gonna be this is I'm cheering for Argentina tomorrow. I'm gonna watch the World Cup. I'm cheering for Argentina and I hope Messi gets the winning goal. I'm not even a soccer fan. Uh but Messi's a name that's been around. Uh, I'd say uh, Messi's a name that's been around for a long, long time. And a guy I've watched a little bit from afar. Um, and I don't think he's ever won a World Cup. And I don't think I have any idea how, how big of a, an event the World Cup is for a soccer player or a football player or whatever the heck you want to call it. And given the guys, I don't know, probably getting close to retirement, uh, um, I'd love to see him get the, to win the World Cup, and I'm hoping to watch it live tomorrow. Oh. So I'm hoping to watch it live tomorrow. Uh, tamales. I don't like tamales. I love Mexican food. I love burritos. And I mean, maybe this isn't even true Mexican. Yes, it is. I mean, they eat burritos in Mexico. Uh, but I'm not a fan of tamales. It feels like kind of fake meat covered in cornmeal or something like that. I just don't like it. It's like a... This might not come out. Hello! Are you, hey, I'm, are you really from Thailand? Because if, if you're really from Thailand, you're now the furthest viewer I have. Super jealous. I had tamales. Do you? Did you, Jack? I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying nobody else should love a tamale. I don't know. I just feel like it's fake meat covered in like cornbread. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's cool that you guys think tamales are the best. Maybe I didn't have the right ones. Maybe I had the cheap like 40 centers that maybe my mom bought from the grocery store. Uh, life in the U.S. is good. I probably haven't had good tamales. But do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? First of all, I'm not a big fan of cornbread. And I don't know if it's really cornbread that it's wrapped in. But I just find it yucky. Dry. Again, I like steak and chorizo. I don't even know what an empanada is. I've heard of them, of course, but I don't know what it is. I don't know. How long can I... How long have I talked? Have I really talked for 45 minutes? Good morning, Tara Jane. Maybe I'll just keep talking. Masa. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, cornmeal. No, the ram... I'm not... Because sometimes aren't like tamales actually covered in like, like corn, the corn, whatever it's called. All right, maybe I'm not having the right stuff or a cheap Americanized grocery store version of what a tamale is. Shock, Mark Willis, thank you. Aren't sometimes tamales actually covered in like the sh corn shuck? Or the husk, aren't they? And you're supposed to take that off, and then there's this cornbread, cheap meat, fake meat <laughs> wrapped in cornbread. And I'm not trying to diss. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> it's just, I'm not trying to be mean. <laughs> These are just my thoughts. I've never really enjoyed a tamale. I mean, I've eaten them and said, eh. You put enough salsa or sour cream or refried beans around them. You need to come see us. I Well, I've sent you a friend request. You would love Champ Burrito. Right now, I'll just say my favorite and is a burrito. A burrito is just a huge taco with lots of meat 
and sour cream and uh, I don't have tequila. I never even liked tequila. I mean, I think tequilas and margaritas and margaritas are awesome. There's some things I miss about not drinking. I haven't had a drink in just about 14 months. Tamales with raisins. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's, I haven't had a drink in about 14 months. And I look back fondly at margaritas. I never drank them enough that they like consumed my life. Hello, Monica. I love seeing those two of those, those two words. I hope you're doing well. I hope your cheering is going well. And, uh, uh, I hope you're uh, having a great morning. Thank you for chiming in and calling me Coach Tracy. I love being called dad, but the second best thing, where, Monica? Where, Monica? Is it the one at your school? I'm sick as heck. Good morning, Reese. Oh my gosh. What time does it start? And can a really sick dad go? Can I still make it? I'd love to see you guys cheer. I would love to see you guys cheer. I'm really sick. I don't know that I should go. What time does it start? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Are you sure? I shouldn't go. Uh, Tara, maybe I will. I want to go. I love seeing you guys cheer. I love seeing my daughters. But I'm really sick and I'm not sure. Hello, Letitia. Uh, no, that's my daughter's friends. Uh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> uh, that's a couple of my daughter's friends uh, uh, that are on the cheer team. Uh, with her, and she's competing at Oswego uh, High School at 10.50 today, apparently, which is like two hours from now, and I'd love to go see her, and I'm not feeling well, and I'm not sure I should, and I was coach of a of her track team at junior high uh, last year, and it was the neatest thing, having all these kids look up to you and call you Coach Tracy. And I was so proud to be called Coach Tracy. And it was a hard job and I wasn't like, I mean, I can't tell you what I've had going on. Uh, and don't think I was ready to be it, but I love being called Coach Tracy and trying to help uh, uh you know, making a difference in these kids' lives. Um, so when her friend hopped on, who was on the track team, and said, good morning, Coach Tracy. Uh, you know, <laughs> it always makes me feel good because it meant a lot to be called Coach Tracy. Uh, it's such a neat thing. And the other coaches would call you coach. I think I could be a coach just to be called coach because <laughs> it felt so cool. I don't think so, Shannon. Uh, I think at the junior high level, uh, as good as it felt, I think my passion and intensity uh, for track uh, was too much for the thing. I, I got mad at a kid. I yelled at a kid. I yelled at a kid. I shouldn't have yelled at a kid. You know? I shouldn't have yelled at a kid. But, I mean, I can't tell you what, you know... <laughs> You know, yeah, the place I was in, 
and I yelled at a kid and I shouldn't have yelled at a kid, but you know, I think as a junior high level, uh, sport, it's almost kind of like a gym class a little bit. And maybe they don't take the training or the competition or the sport as seriously as I did as coach. And it was frustrating for me because my job was the motivator and to say, come on, let's go. Keep running. You're doing great. Keep running. <laughs> but honestly, at the junior high level, they can just say, nah, I'm just going to stand here or sit. And, you know, and I get it. I mean, I want them to participate and I get that some people are slow and struggle. <laughs> But when you're pouring your heart into something, trying to get kids as passionate about it as you, and they're just not, you know, it's hard. Yeah, Mark, I bet. But thing, you're old, you said you were 60. Things have changed. You know, I didn't say the most horrible things. I did yell at them. Uh, you know, and it wasn't right. The kid's just a kid. And, I, you know, you shouldn't do that. I shouldn't have done it. And it wasn't high school football. It was junior high track. But I was pouring my heart into it. And my heart sometimes overflows and doesn't do the right... the parents that I yelled at their kid and I looked at him and said look the child's parents complained about me I'm not here to save my job <laughs> I'm not here for the money or my job I'm here to help these kids and do my best and you're the principal of a school <laughs> And you've got a parent complaining that a assistant junior high track coach yelled at their kid. Um, you know, I understand you probably don't need me in your life or the headache or my passion or my yelling at the kid or the complaints from the parent, you know. I'm not here to save my job. I think you need to let me go. <laughs> so we agreed that I shouldn't work. It was only a week and a half left in the season. And it was hard because I was disappointed in myself and everything kind of a little bit because I really enjoyed it. But I just don't think it was a good place for me to be at that moment. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, it was a good place for me to be. I just don't think it was quite the right setting. Because uh, I think I'd be an amazing coach, but I think at the junior high level and the passion I feel and the enthusiasm I was pouring into it, um, you know, at the junior high level, maybe my intensity was too much. I'm sure, apparently it was. So no, um, I think I was the best coach they had. I think everyone knows it. <laughs> How 
However, I mean, I was too much. I was too me for the position. And that's part of why I'm not sure I could be a substitute. You know, I high five. I engage with the kids. I cheer them with all my heart. And I was the, I, I, I was their favorite coach. There's no doubt about it. The other coaches know it too. Because uh, I poured my heart and soul into, hey, from Germany, into that job. And it meant a lot to me. And it was only a two-month gig. <laughs> uh, but I gave it my all. And I think my all might be too much for a junior high coaching position. You know, I really do. Holly, what the heck is that? Uh you hello, have a nice day. Thank you all. I've talked. This is one of the longest live shows I've ever done. Hello, Eileen. Should I keep talking? Do you want me to keep talking? I really don't have much to do. You guys don't think I should go to the cheer competition? I mean, you apparently don't. I mean, I know I shouldn't, but I kind of want to. I, mean, I can sit by myself. Merry Christmas, Eileen. Uh, I appreciate you guys for following the host. My page is growing really quickly all of a sudden. It took me for it took me like seven months to hit a thousand followers. It took me about three months to hit my next thousand, and then two months for me to hit the next thousand. And you know, it might take me a month to hit my next. It's kind of exciting. And Abe, I talked to you about why TikTok's so cool. On Facebook, uh, yeah, please ask. What are you asking? Where are you? I am in, are, are you in Canada? If I want to go, go. All right, I like that, Texas Twister. I do want to go. I'll sit by myself. I won't get near anybody. I won't shake any hands. I won't, I am from uh, Downers Grove, Illinois, but I'm living in Naperville, Illinois. I'd feel bad if I didn't go see my daughter's cheer competition. And I'll avoid people. Are you really from Zambia? I'm getting, I must be being fed to Africa an amazing amount this morning for some reason. Uh, but I'd really like to see my daughter's cheer competition. Uh, most of her cheer competitions are... Uh, Uh, they travel for and most like they'll be in Texas or Florida or and I just can't um, hello from Germany I can't travel with her cheer competition and see most of her cheer competitions uh, and that makes me sad and uh, you know she's got kind of a local smaller one here you know, about 40 minutes away, I could drive to that. And uh, I'd like to go see it. So I'm going to go see it. <laughs> and I appreciate you guys for watching today and allowing me to be emotional. Because <laughs> I think it makes me feel good to get it out and to talk it out and in a relatively safe environment. <laughs> and uh, share a moment or share an hour today. That's weird. I don't even know where the time went. I don't even know what value I offered. I'm not sure I did. But I hope I offered something for you today. Companionship. Feeling you're not alone. Feeling we all have struggles. You got to see my dog, Holly. Who's right there. Who believes my full-time job is petting her. And I'm excited about uh, my third straight day off. And it's a mental health, physical health uh, rest day for me. And I'm going to take a break from resting to go see my daughter cheer at Oswego High School. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. Their competitions are all on the... I can't fly to Dallas every two weeks to go watch a cheer competition. You know, I wish I could. 
I go to the local ones, they're amazing, they're amazing. I'm six foot two, they're amazing. They're huge productions, they're like professional events with massive lights and flips and cheers, it's just so cool. Um, and uh, I enjoy the heck out of them and I wish I could go see them and cheer. Uh, but they're really cool. They're really cool. And I'm so proud of my girl. You know? Yeah, I love to watch too. I'll tell you what, the parents go crazy at the cheer competitions. You know, I think the judges get swayed by how crazy the parents are. Usually the cheer mom and dads are pretty peppy. I'm pretty peppy most times, and I'm a great cheerer. <laughs> I should have been a cheerleader. I think I could have been. I mean, I don't know if I would have been comfortable <laughs> being a cheerleader. <laughs> you know. So instead, I ran cross country and track and had people cheering for me. You're a dancer. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to go to this cheer competition. I'm going to leave here in a little bit. And I'm excited that I went live today and was reminded about my daughter's cheer competition by her friends. And I think God works in God's ways. And... I uh, think God works in God's ways. And if I, I was not going to go live today, if I didn't go live, I wouldn't have remembered the cheer competition and I would have laid around being sick today. And although I've really enjoyed laying around being sick today, I would rather, uh, you know, see my daughter from afar and not sit by anybody. Uh, and... Uh, Cheer on my daughter's cheering and her team. Good morning, Yvonne. So I appreciate you all for tuning in this morning, for following my page, for sending me some love and some encouragement. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I want to thank you guys for your love and support, your encouragement, your kind words for joining me today, for hopefully tuning in tomorrow and tuning in every morning. I, I try and make it every morning at 8 o'clock as best I can. And uh, again, I appreciate you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day today. It's Saturday morning. I hope you had a good week. I hope you're going to enjoy your day. You're going to enjoy the weekend. You're going to enjoy the ones you're with. And most importantly, enjoy who you are and um, feel good about who you are. I hope you're loving yourself. I hope you are forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you real, real soon. Bye-bye.